Hi, welcome to the Shepherd's Rest Doc Talk. This is episode 176B, part two. <laughs> I did point five. B. All right, point it five. It still works. Yes, yes, half. 176 and a half. There we go. Um, the reason we're doing it this way, like we said in Cam's tour portion, we didn't have one last week because scheduling conflicting and whoo, there was a lot going yes, on. There was. It would take all of 15 minutes to tell you everything <laughs> that was going on in our lives last week. So we won't do that. But I will say that I want to continue with, um, chapter 15 of okay. Acts because that is where we left yeah. off last time we stopped with a, a very cliffhanger. Good right. Right. So we wanted to know in Acts chapter 15, in verse 20, if those four things were the only things that Gentiles had to do in order to be saved. Right. All right. Because this whole chapter of 15 is the Jews from Jerusalem were saying, look, these Gentiles, God fears, and Gentiles coming in, they have to be circumcised and take on the whole Torah in order to be saved. Now, we talked about how that was just a starting point, mm -hmm. those four things, okay? So I want to go through a little more detail about those four things and show you how James didn't just come up with four things off the top of his head. All right, so let's go to Leviticus 17. Seven through nine says, and let them no longer slaughter their slaughterings to demons. This is talking about Gentiles. Mm -hmm. After whom they hoard, this is a law forever for them throughout their generations. And say to them, any man of the house of Israel or of the strangers who sir joins among you, who offers an ascending offering or slaughtering and does not bring it to the door of the tent of appointment to do it to Yahweh, that man shall be cut off from among his people. Now notice in 8, it says, or of the stranger who is sojourning among you. Right. The key to all four of these is they have that phrase in it. Yes. You know, now we know from Numbers 15, 15, it says there's one law for the foreigner and for the, um, the natural born. Right. Israelite. Yeah. All right. And that's also in Exodus 12, 48, or right. 49. So the whole point of that is when you're in the land mm -hmm. and you're a natural born Israelite and you have foreigners that want to join themselves to the Lord, they have the same law. Right. All right. Well, that, that makes sense because it's the same God. That's right. That's kind of like here in America. We live under our laws. Right. And if you want to come become a citizen, you have to abide by the same laws. Right. That's how it should be. I'm not saying that's how it is. I'm just saying that's how it should be. It's encouraged that way. That's right. And this was no different. So now, while they are dealing with the diaspora, mm -hmm. the point is there's ceremonial purity that the Jews want to keep. Right. And they mm -hmm. were afraid these Gentiles were polluting them. Right. All right. They were making them ritually unclean. Now, we could go into a million different arguments about, but they were far away from the temple, and it's only until the next day, and blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. Right. These Jews like to stay in a state of ritual purity, right. and they believe that the Gentiles were tainting that. All right. Now, we know from Acts 10 that the Lord said and showed them Gentiles are not unclean people. Right. All right. Now, their practices make them unclean, just like your practices make you right. unclean. But Gentiles, the stigma at that time were that Gentiles were just unclean, all right? So that's the first one I wanted to show you. And let's go to 10 and 11. Yes. And by unclean, just meaning that they can't go to the temple. Right. Okay. So, and that... Or they to, defile you right. if and they're around honest, you. And to be honest, a Gentile would be unclean, not able to go to the temple because of the way they lived. So right. it is a true statement, but once someone who is a god fear comes mm -hmm. in, they want to release those practices so they can now be in a position that they can enter. And the only way they can go to the temple is by following what the Lord put the rules for them to go by. Right. And how are they supposed to learn that? Right. If the Jews I, won't even let them come around right. because they're unclean. Right. This is the whole problem in Acts 15. Right. All right. So the next one is um, Leviticus 17, 10 and 11. It says, and any man of the house of Israel. Okay, we, we read that one already. Let's go to 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the slaughter place to make atonement for your lives, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the life. So you're not supposed to have blood. 
right, all right. Now I'm just gonna go to the one that's strangled because it's just easy. There is a verse for that one and that is Leviticus 17, 12 and 13. But they go, they both go with the same one about not consuming the blood. Right. Because when you strangle, back in the time that this was, the Romans would, that was their way of slaughtering animals. They strangled them because it, it allowed the blood to remain and then they would hang the, the animal up and it would coagulate or whatever. Co coagulate. It, yeah. Coagulate. <laughs> and it would, um, it would almost rot. And it, it was like, that's the way they, they ate liked it. it. They yeah. liked it that way. Yeah. That is the way that they ate it. So this prevented them from even buying right in the marketplace of the pagans right okay so that would ensure that if i'm serving you beef you know that it wasn't strangled right or there's no blood in it right you know all of these things okay so then the last one is the fornication you can find that in leviticus 18 uh 6 through 23 it goes through the entire list of all the sexual you know immoral things that can go on and so these were the four basic things for the God fears and the pagans that they had to adhere to in order to come into the synagogues. Right. All right, now let's look at Acts 15, 21. Which comes after this 20. Is, yes, this is Very the important. key to understand the entire council and what they decided. All right, 21 says, For from ancient generations Moses has in every city those proclaiming him being read in the congregations every Sabbath. So their whole point is have them do these four things so they don't make you ritually contaminated. Right. And then they can come into the synagogue and now they're going to learn the rest. And after that, it's a process. It's a process, line upon line, uh, precept upon precept. Now you understand why Peter said, look, why are we going to require these Gentiles to do what even us and our fathers couldn't right, do? Right, right. Because the whole point is without the guidance of Messiah, we can't do these Correct. Right. He is the one, the Holy Spirit is the one that leads us and guides us. But if they're never exposed to it, how are they ever going to get it? Right. Yeah. You know, and I do want to reiterate, and we will see this next week in 16 or the next lesson. It'll probably come out sooner. Uh, we're filming that today too. Um, the next lesson that it is very obvious that Paul considered circumcision conversion. That's what he was speaking about, all right? All right, so as we move on, we see that Acts 15, 23 through 29 is just the letter. So the apostles decided we're gonna send letters. Not only we're gonna send letters with you back to Antioch, because okay. this is where all the, dis, you know, the um, disputes were happening in Antioch. We're gonna send you back with the letters and we're gonna send witnesses to say, yes, this is from us. Okay. So they Two or more witnesses. Right, so they sent Silas and um, Barsabbas. Okay. All right, so those were two. Now, Barsabbas stayed for a while, but then he went back. Now, we're gonna see Silas next week. He goes with Paul on his second mission trip. Okay. All right, so we see that they go back to Antioch um, Throughout the rest of this chapter, they go back to Antioch. They're they're preaching the good news. They're see, we told you so. No, I'm kidding. They probably weren't. Um, they, it was just um, reinforcing what Paul was already preaching uh -huh. and had been preaching. So he was even more bold now. So then he, after a while, says, "You know, I think we need to now go to all the places that we went on our first mission trip. Okay. Go back to Galatia. Now, the letter of the Galatians that we have in our Bibles." This happened before this council. Right. And when you read it, you can see, oh, yeah, you can tell Paul was really adamant about it, but it. he didn't quite have the backing of everyone else. He right. just kind of told of stories of how when Peter came and he rebuked him, and I'm telling you, this is right, and the Lord showed me this, and this is how it should be. So now he wants to go back to these places to strengthen them and see how they're doing. Okay. All right? And, and I love that because in so many letters, he's like, I'm here to strengthen you. Yes. And he takes, so, well, let's just read it. All right. So um, in 36, it says, And after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us now go back and visit our brothers in every city where we proclaim the word of Yahweh and see how they are. And Barnabas proposed to take with them John called Mark. Okay, remember him? He deserted them yes. in Cyprus on their first mission trip and did not go into Asia with them where they where they experienced all the hardship. Right. All right. And 
38, but Paul thought it not fit to take with them the one who withdrew from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. A sharp feeling therefore came to be, so they parted from one another. And so Barnaba took Mark and they sailed to Cyprus. So they went to the first leg of the, the um, okay, their mission Mark. trip. Okay. All right. And Paul chose Silas. This is one of the witnesses okay. that came from. I love that because yeah. he's choosing the one that said that can back up right these letters. Claim. Right. Yeah. yeah. So Paul chose Silas and went off, being committed by the brothers to the favor of Elohim. And he went through Syria and Cilicia and strengthened the assembly. And he, as we see uh, next week in sixteen, he's going to go up into the area of Asia, back into Galatia. So not Asia, but Galatia. I'm learning all these different right places, territories. Yes, and 16 is full of all kinds of, like I didn't realize, mm, never mind. We'll get there when we get to 16. Okay. All right. So we see here that Paul and Barnabas, they split. I mean, they've been partners all this time. Now they're splitting. Right. And there's no more mention of Barnabas in Acts after this. What about Mark? Well, Yes. There is mention of Mark because Mark ends up um, helping Paul later in his life when he's so, in Rome. So isn't it funny? You look at the beginning, but that's not what matters. Mm-hmm. It's how they end. Yes. And you know what's so great about this is be, it's believed because of Paul's sharp words and his firmness of, nope, I'm not giving you another chance, is uh-huh. why Mark went on to maturity. You know, it, he got his act together right. and then eventually wrote the book of Mark. Yeah. And did so many works. We know that they uh, reconcile later on because he becomes a courier for uh, Paul when he's in prison in Rome throughout Asia. So that's pretty neat. So it, so it all happened for a reason, you know, right. but it had to be this way so it could eventually, you know. Right. But we do see, I do want to say this. Um, some believe that Barnabas died in Cyprus. They believe that, remember the, um, the magician... Yes. Okay. Um, that's in Cyprus, and mm-hmm. he tried to discredit Simon, them. I think was his yeah. Name. yeah. It's believed that he drug him out and had him executed oh. while they were in Cyprus. However, okay. I don't really lean towards that because he is also mentioned by Paul in Galatians, but that was before his second right, mission before, trip. Right. But 1 Corinthians... See, now that I'm learning where all these places are, I'm like, okay, Corinthians didn't happen until his second mission trip. Right. And when he mentions him, he actually, it's either in the one in Corinthians or Colossians, he says, if Barnabas comes to you, right, well, then he can't be dead. You know, so I really don't think that happened. That's just kind of folklore or whatever you want to call it. It's just speculation that um, in one of the. Probably they miss that he's being um, referenced to. In future time. So they're like, right. well, I mean, he just died. Right. And, well, there was a book called the Something of Barnabas or something, but they they think it's fake, that it was just propaganda of the first century church. I, I really what? don't know. Yeah. Back then? Yeah. Yeah, right. All right, well, that's all I have for you for this week for Acts chapter 15. So join us next week for chapter 16, and we hope you have a fantastic week. Shalom.